Well, I'm not worthy of your matchless grace. You're worthy. to Bible study, let us have a word of prayer. Shall we bow? Heavenly Father, we humbly approach the throne of grace, giving thanks for blessing us to be here uh, this evening to study another portion of thy word. We pray that the things that we say and do and the manner in which we conduct ourselves are pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. We pray for your manservant that will deliver tonight's message. We pray that you continue to bless his head with wisdom and knowledge as he studies God's word. We pray that the things that we study tonight will generate our heart and our souls and that we will be better prepared to go out into your world and proclaim the truth to all that we come in contact with. It is in Jesus' name that we beg of all things. Let us all say amen. All right, family, listen, if you're visiting here, it is always a delight to have you come our way. And if you'd be so kind, just let us know what city and state you're watching from on tonight. Because any and every time that the camera lenses swing open, we want you to know that we welcome you into this Bible study. We're blessed to have you here, and it is our prayer that something is said that will encourage your soul. And now to my brothers and sisters, these superlative saints of the South Union Church of Christ, oh, how sweet it is to be a child of the King. Now, if you don't mind, just take out your Bible Navigate over on your electronic devices, meet us or beat us to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's travel to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And uh, we would like to pull up the spiritual uh, park and break at verse 14. Let's, let's pull it up and examine verse 14. And we'll read a few of the following verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. You should find these words. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. 
and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life, and who is sufficient for these things. If that's in your Bible, just type into the live chat. It's time for our blessing. Amen. <laughs> it's time for our blessing. As children of God, we always come in full expectation that the Lord will provide. So family and friends, we'd like to use for a thought, theme, thrust, and tag for this text, the vision of our victory. Amen. The vision of our victory. It has been said, family, uh, that if you're going to be successful in anything, in any endeavor of life, you have to start with the end in mind. Amen. Start with the end in mind. Everything that you are going to do any kind of major undertaking, you want to see yourself at the end as you start in the beginning. Family, I believe that this is a great philosophy to embrace and to pattern ourselves in because what it does is it conditions our actions, our thoughts, as we are passing through and proceeding in our journey to be successful. You know, everyone has a path that they have to take in life. And as we proceed with our path of life, we must remember that in the end, we would like to be successful. Success is always a wonderful, wonderful accomplishment. Whenever we've gone through some things, whenever we've experienced some hard times, some times of difficulty, some times of testing, it's a wonderful thing to come out on the other side with the victory in hand. Uh, I'm reminded of the NASCAR uh, association, when these professional race car drivers, when they uh, get into their uh, car, when they're harnessed in, uh, as they see the green light and as they start down the track and these big motor speedways, we see them and they race and they drive for hours on end to accomplish the victory lap. Come on, family. When they slide into that seat, they are thinking about emerging as the victor once the race is all done. They have to see themselves taking that victory lap because that's what's going to motivate them to make the right decision, to make the right cut, the right turn, to do the right thing as they are involved in the race. Somebody ought to help me lift that up just a little bit higher. Family, we are not in a stock car, but we are in a race, running this race of life. And in this race, we must see ourselves standing at the finish line as the victors and not the victims. Who am I talking to in here on tonight? Family, we must see ourselves as having conquered and not having been conquered. We must see ourselves emerging as champions when we've been striving as challengers. Is there anybody here who's ready to be counted among those who triumph? I want to triumph. I want it to be well with my soul and I want God to get the glory in everything that I do. And so therefore, Paul paints for us this beautiful illustration because he wants the Christians to know that you are champions in Christ Jesus. <laughs> All right, now let's unpack this text. What Paul does is he brings to the focus, he brings to uh, the field of vision uh, that these Christians are involved and they are competing for a great prize. I want everybody to hear that. We are competing for a great prize. Now, we're not competing. We're not in competition with one another, 
but we are trying to make heaven our home by living faithfully as God has commanded. Now he wants them to see family that they have the triumph. They have the victory in Christ Jesus. Now to put this on the landscape of history, uh, the Roman triumph was an official proceeding uh, where it was a parade of victory for the general who had won the battle or won the war. Uh, it's reserved for the praetor. It's reserved for the consul. It's reserved uh, for Caesar. It's reserved for one who is the head of state and he has been victorious in his conquest of province and he has won the victory, he has won the battle, and he uh, emerges as the valiant champion in the end. In order to celebrate this great victory, they would oftentimes have a parade. They would oftentimes have a triumph, here it is, into the city. This was a royal and regal affair in which uh, the Caesar himself, would sit on a chariot that would be carried by four driven horses. And these horses would lead that chariot into town. Of course, the magistrates and the Senate would all be in the procession and uh, people would line the streets and they would be celebrating. The army would be behind in step because this was a great celebration. Why? Because they had won the battle, they won the war, and they emerged as champions. Come here closely, family. I'm thankful that Paul used this great, great vision to get over to the church that you are champions in the sight of God. You are important in the sight of God. You are triumphs in the sight of God. Listen, God uses you as a wonderful trophy case. He wants the world to see that what he does for you, he can do for someone else as well. Aren't you with me on tonight? I'm thankful that God can use my life to bring him glory. God can use my life to encourage and inspire someone else. Listen, if God can do it for us, family, God can do it for our neighbors. If God can do it for us, God can do it for the community. And if God can do it for us, God can do it for the world. The Christians needed to see that their victory was in Christ. See, if you're going to be successful, you have to see yourself as being a victor. While you're under this hard time of testing, while you're being tested and while you're being tried and while you're going through and while you're being pressed down and while you're being overlooked, see it as God is with me and I must go through this so that I may triumph in the end. <laughs> Family, Paul thanks the Lord. He says, now thanks be unto God because he always causes us to triumph where? in Christ. Our real victory is not in self-accomplishment. It's not in our career or it's not in uh, the awards or accolades that are given by man. Our true victory can be found in Christ. Are you with me? He says, because when you triumph in Christ, watch this now, and make manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Now, this bears reference going back to the Roman triumph when they would come into the city. Uh, history teaches us that the priests would burn incense because they wanted the smell of victory to be in the air. <laughs> Come here, family. Come here for a moment. Listen, God uses our lives as the aroma of victory that's in the air. When people see what God can do as he works through us, as we allow him to use us for his good, for his glory, and for his purpose, then the Lord will put us on public display and people will smell the aroma of excellence, the aroma of victory, the aroma of what being a Christian is all about. Now, when we speak of excellence, it's not to say that you're not going to have any times of difficulty. It's not to say that you're going to uh, hit it right 
all of uh, all at once. So you're going to knock it out of the park on the first at bat. That's not what this idea of excellence is. But our excellence is summed up in that we belong to Christ. And when we belong to Christ, because Christ overcame hell, death, and the grave, because Christ overcame the world, then we will overcome the world. Amen. Watch this. He says, we are a savor of his knowledge by us in every place, everywhere the apostles went, everywhere uh, the Christian travels, God is using us as an aroma to improve the atmosphere. Always believe, family, that God has a purpose for every path that you are on. <laughs> I say God has a purpose for your path. He has a purpose for your path and God is using you to improve the atmosphere. Are you with me? Listen, the Bible goes on to say, verse 15, for we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. Watch this. God uses us as this example to those that are are saved, but also to those that are perishing because they will spend. This is why those that don't even agree with our religious activities, the Bible says that uh, when a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. God can use us to his glory and he can improve the life of someone else who's watching, someone else who's standing by, someone else who needs to know that God is able. Hallelujah, somebody. Look at the text. The text in verse 16, to the one we are the savor of death unto death and to the other the savor of life unto life and who is sufficient for these things. Watch this now. Uh, to those that don't understand, the gospel makes no sense. The gospel is silly. The gospel is mundane. The gospel is futile to those who've already died spiritually or to those that are dead or dying spiritually, but to those that seek after life, to those that seek after godly things and good things, we bring life to that situation. Oh, family, see yourself, vision, vision yourself. See the value of your victory. See the vision of your victory and continue to follow the plan of God. It may not always be easy. It may not always be popular, but God wants to use me. God wants to use you. God wants to use us for his glory. And in order for me to be used, I have to see this vision of victory while I'm walking with the Lord each day. Who am I talking to in here on tonight? Family, we cannot stop in our faithfulness unto God. We can't cease from being faithful. We can't give up. We can't grow weary in our well-doing because God has so many things that he wants to do with you and through you for you and everyone else around you. And I can't stop now. I have to continue to run. I have to continue to hope. I have to continue to pray. I have to continue to love. I have to continue to trust. And when I do, I can see the vision of my victory. I haven't made it there yet, but I know that by God's grace, by God's power, and by God's mercy, by his love, we will win in the end. Somebody ought to type that into the live chat right now. We will win in the end. Is there anybody here who can help me just give God some glory because he's using us in mighty ways? Just like that general, just like Caesar, just like that uh, war general who was victorious would come in on that parade, would come in uh, because he was celebrated, he was lauded and applauded because he won the battle, he won the war, he gained the province, he gained territory for the kingdom. That's what God does for us as we continue to allow him to work through us and expand the borders 
of the kingdom of God. Oh, family, I wish I had more time because God continues to make a way even when we don't know how we're going to make it. The vision of victory. You have to see yourself being successful. See yourself as coming out. See yourself as standing under the times of pressure because God will promote you in the end. You have to see that in your mind and trust that God will bring you through. All right, family. We've had a wonderful time in study on tonight and I know the time is far spent, but we appreciate your time and your attention. Listen, don't ever give up on God because he never gives up on you. Amen. Family, if you'd like to study with us in further uh, biblical investigation, or if you'd like to partner with us in prayer, please call the number that you see at the bottom of your screen. We do believe that the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. We want to pray with you as we partner together, as we touch and agree that God is still able. Amen. And now, uh, as we leave and come down from this Bible study and, and get ready to walk with the Lord again for another week, we're going to trust him all of our days. And uh, we know that God will bring us through. So as we leave this place, as we always say, be reminded, never forget that here at South Union, we love you and there's not a thing that you can do about it. Be blessed in the Lord and then Lord will, we'll see you next week. God bless you. Have a good night. Oh yes, your word. Oh Lord, your holy name. Can we say that you are?